Welcome to our discussion on virtue ethics. So today, discussing virtue theory ethics, we have three main players in the development of virtue theory ethics. First, first is Philip Foot. Now, uh, Philip Foot, <laughs> what are your contributions to virtue ethics? Um, hi, I'm Philippa. Um, basically, I'm trying to modernise Aristotle's theory of virtue ethics to modern times because I believe that goodness is the natural flourishing of humans as living beings. I don't think it should be about dry theorising, um, but about making the world a better place. So I think it's more about the effects of the ethical theory um, other than just the principle. Um, and, but I do admit that virtue ethics does not guarantee happiness, but it makes an important part, part of achieving it. And a quote, um, <laughs> to quote myself, Virtue ethics is the art of charting a course among various temptations. Well, thank you very much, Philippa. Um, next we have Elizabeth Anskin. Uh, Elizabeth? Uh, what would you say about virtue ethics? Um, well, it is a critical. Wait, I'm I'm critical of a. <laughs> I'm critical of a law conception of ethics, where the key focus is obligation and duty. Um, and what I wrote in my um, modern moral philosophy um, is that theories which dispense of God but maintain legalistic framework, lack foundation for meaningful use of concepts of morality. I mean, there's two interpretations of this. Um, one, <laughs> one, <laughs> one interpretation is that it's better to say that a situation is unjust, untruthful, or unchaste than morally wrong. Unchaste. Sorry, had a bit of a technical hitch. So the second interpretation um, is that this criticism establishes the superiority of religious-based ethics, as utilitarianism, Kantian ethics, etc., try to adopt logistic framework, legalistic. legalistic framework, without the right background assumptions about a legislator to ground it. Weaknesses within existing ethical systems, e.g. Kantian ethics and utilitarianism, mean new approach, virtue ethics, is required. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Next we have uh, Alice, no, Alistair, Alistair. Alistair McIntyre um, and his rather lengthy contributions to virtue ethics. Alistair. Okay, well firstly, I'd like to um, point out that morality as we know it has kind of lost its way because we end up with moral dilemmas that force us to choose between keeping absolute rules that we want to live by and um, yeah, sorry, abandoning rules that we want to live by and preventing serious harm to a number of people. Uh, I urge you to remember where ethics came from. We need to understand the historical context. I believe students of ethics should Im immerse themselves in the past masters before looking at recent ethical theories. You need to appreciate the narrative context. This helps us understand issues. However, I do want ethics to do its job and tell us how, to, how, how we ought to live our lives. Put another way, um, if we were talking about an ethical issue, finding out about the context of the issue helps us understand the decision that people make. So it follows that different societies have different values. Um, so different virtues are more important in different societies. So it's, it's all relative. And this is because um, virtues change over time. This can be seen in a number of examples. For example, in tribal communities, the virtues are much different than they are in modern, larger cities. Because like virtues such as physical strength and courage, um, but also like cunning and ruthlessness are very important virtues. Whereas in larger cities, virtues such as temperance and justice are more valued. And there's, a, there's less focus on physical strength because, um, like for example, the virtue of wisdom provides the necessary understanding 
to like navigate through complex conflicts that arise with so many people living together. So, like um, different different virtues become more useful and therefore valued in societies depending on sizes. So that just that explains why virtues are relative, which is an important thing to remember in virtue ethics. I think. Um, Another thing I'd like to touch on is the idea of internal and external goods. This calls on Aristotle's view of eudaimonia, well, his, his, propose, his proposal. Um, basically, virtues are what we refer to as internal goods, but also very important are external goods, which is derived from his eudaimonia because things, external factors such as food, clothes and a place to live all contribute to our happiness. Um, so, yeah, so this just shows how virtue and external goods are important. So in summary, even though I don't like summarising because I think you should look deeper into um, issues, um, we all value different, different virtues of character, practices and physical things. They're all relative. And so by understanding historical and social context, we can understand ethical issues that arise. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alistair. You're a, you're a true hero. <laughs> and that concludes our uh, presentation on virtue ethics. I hope you've enjoyed it. I got the magic in me. Every time I touch that track, it turns into gold.